knowledge is banning So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Federico. I'm a computer science student from King's College London. So, students always know what they study, or at least they are supposed to if they want to pass their exam. But more difficultly, they, they know why they are studying what they study. Or, for example, they are going to answer, well, I study this because it's part of my degree. But why are you studying specifically the topic that you study? And oftentimes, people don't know how to answer because they don't have a big picture of what they are doing. So, today I built a product called Knowledge Spanning Tree that actually does this. Uh, it highlights graphically the knowledge of uh, a course of study or knowledge in general so that you can understand the big picture of what you're doing. So how it works. I have a database that I created, a sample database connected to a web interface and uh, I have here for example my computer science degree. When I open it I have my three years of the degree and when I open them I have the terms with all the modules for every term. And also, this is not supposed to happen, but then I'll explain. And also, <laughs> you can go to each of the modules and understand what you're doing every week. So at the end of the semester, you actually know what you should, you should know for the exam. And this really makes you in control of your situation. <coughs> and also, in other application, it's important to be in control of your knowledge what you know and what you should know because you know what comes next. For example, for students from the GCSE, when they are looking uh, at what they want to do in the future, for example, um, they, they can have one of these schema with knowledge, subfield of the knowledge, and at a lower level the jobs that you end up doing if you study there. So actually <coughs> they get passion for what they study because I know if I study that, I get the job that I love. Or, for example, another implementation, well, still the same implementation, another use is that a student looking at what they study or what they want to do, they discover other jobs that they really love. So, I built this product today just on my own in a few hours. Could you imagine what can come out of this? Is, for example, we have a team, a funding, and more time to do this. I think we can create also a template, and this is what wrongly happened before, in which you can create your own schema and then change the dependency and create a new schema. Oh, this is part of this module, okay, let's put it here and so on. So I strongly believe that today I started with a very good product to help students during their course path. And speaking more, you know, for in big changes, it can help students to make their life choices when it comes to their career, having the big picture in their mind. Thank you. Very dramatic, huh? I like it. I, I see an application um, to create, uh, allows people to kind of customize and create dynamic MOOCs, right? So yes. you could say, okay, this is the kind of job that I want to get or this is the kind of business I want to start, and then it could cherry pick modules out of a whole lot of different MOOCs and kind of stitch it together as a composable uh, learning, custom learning plan. This yeah. is another implementation, yes. There are many, many ways in, in which it can be implemented. It can be uh, given up from university, for example, when they want to uh, explain their courses, or uh, I, find, I find it very useful to, uh, to help them during their studies mm -hmm. to understand what they're doing. But for example, it can be used on a blog, uh, where the blogger, we, we have an API in which they can, which they can just copy the code and make their own maps to explain a topic or to give a big picture of what, where the bit, the topic that they are talking about fit in the big picture. 
and also, as I said, templates, empty templates, in which you write the voices down, like Reading Week or Data Representation or Vegetarian Cuisine. Has anyone noticed that? It's not in computer science. Anyway. <laughs> um, and, and then customize their map as they want. So if they, they make a mistake in the dependency, they can just drag and drop the voices around. And it's very light. I built just two tables on the database to do, to do this I think representation. The idea of um, kind of uh, scaffolding up your knowledge or staircasing it is really interesting because um, you could go to like read a new book or, or under, sure. try to understand some new knowledge, but you haven't got the prerequisite knowledge. Just in general, sure. like you could apply this to yes. it, uh, Amazon um, algorithm about like what book should I read next. Given yes. what I, the knowledge that I currently possess. Yes, exactly. Uh, so or when it comes to computer science, which is my uh, my field of study, uh, you can have many different sectors in there specifically, so you can categorize software based on what they do. And when you're looking at a new area, you know at least where to start because oftentimes it's not very clear. There are many, many options mm -hmm. uh, to do the same thing. So one way to think about knowledge is <laughs> I, I, look, I look at this stuff quite deeply. So, you can think of like a, a circle representing the, all the body of knowledge uh, in the world from your perspective. A small slice of that is what you know that you know. I know I know how to speak English. What I know that I don't know, I know that I don't know how to speak uh, Russian. And the rest is what you don't know you don't know. So when you're going through a system like this or you're new to a field, you don't know what you don't know. And this can play a role to kind of present orthogonal uh, areas that you may be interested to explore, which is very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Federico. Uh, and last, we have we are developers. <laughs> Not developers. <laughs> developers. That's quite a hard act to follow, really. Yeah. Right, so this might seem very similar to Backset. Um, it's probably due to because great minds think alike, but we have a small video that we're going to play, it just kind of quickly describes the issue. Do you need audio? No. <laughs> it's all bad now. Amazing. Come on, are you from this video you don't want it? <laughs> <laughs> this is actually uh, built with some software that uh, me and Dan built uh, professionally. I play some you at the moment. Uh, so we, this is just... We thought we may as well make use of it since yeah. everyone else is doing PowerPoint presentations and we've got a bit of a vendetta against it. Right. So um, what's happening here? Yeah. I'll explain it a bit more. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the idea is that to break down the barriers between lectures, lecturers and students uh, and the feedback that's going on. Um, we were trying to create a polling application, so something that can be um, on an Android or a tablet or something of that nature, because it's just generally what everybody has on them. And it will have a, a lecturer that will be able to create questions and a, uh, and a finite set of answers that can be posted out to everybody in the room. And they can instantly respond and get feedback to, to the answers that they provided, as well as the lecturer can gain statistical knowledge of where the, the room is based on that question. So if there's 50-50, then the lecturer knows that they've got to cover a bit more in that area. And it can also allow him to then share that knowledge so people that you know wouldn't normally stick their hand up and answer a question because they're afraid that it's going to be the wrong answer can also feel, well, actually, I'm not the only person that doesn't know this. So from that, then if everybody gets the question right, the lecturer then can go, well, clearly this topic doesn't need to be covered anymore. We can move on. Uh, and it's rather than having to wait to the, e to the end of a module where you submit feedback, which is great then for the next year it's coming along, but it doesn't help me at all because you know, you've done it and I've not learned a lot, so it's not going to benefit me. So this is the idea that it's kind of responsive feedback that's kind of going to be inserted into every now and again into lectures. It's not designed to replace lectures, it's just designed to make it more interactive, more sort of responsive to wake the lecture, or wake students up, which are currently bored and trying to absorb as much knowledge as possible. So we've got a quick demo, which is what we spent most of our time on. Um, and this would be from the... Uh, lecturer's perspective, so they can create a question, create some uh, answers, and this is what we sent out to the user device. So we've got it all connected via a server, I'll let Elliot explain a bit more in technical detail. But this would be the student's interface, so they would sign in as a student, because the app is just one base, and then you would select uh, teacher or student, connect in, that's what we've done, 
and then straight away you've got the question that's been posted to them. Uh, you select the answer, and you submit. The, the student would then gain feedback as to right or wrong. Then the lecturer would gain a poll, of which could then be converted into a graph just to get an idea of the count uh, uh, answer. Yeah. Very good. Exactly what I need for Tuesday. I think it's as simple as quick. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't have to be any topic related. It could be usable in secondary school, yeah. maybe using primary yeah, school. Actually, the, it's, you said it's similar to um, back chat. It's different, right? It is different. I think we, I think if you combine both, we, that would be actually great. We see great. it as kind of filling a gap. So we, yeah. we came here already as a team and we thought, okay, well, we, we want to solve a problem in education. We had a, gr a great number of ideas that we thought, okay, well in the future we can throw these into like some packages together. Yeah. But we wanted to do something really small and that was really non-intrusive to the lecturer as well. So the lecturer just gets these stats as they're going through. They can have their pre-prepared questions and they can ask. It is and anonymous. they can ask it and they can then Could you run that on Bluetooth? Because literally you will find a lot of lecture theatres where you don't have internet. So the peer-to-peer -peer type of thing, that, well, would, that's be, what it that would be brilliant. It's, 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 it's got a Wi-Fi connection at the moment, so it doesn't rely on any internet connection going back to servers or anything. Yeah. Um, but a Bluetooth connection would definitely be possible. Yeah. We built this demo using Unity, which means we can easily deploy to any device, uh, Android, iOS, um, Blackberry, web. web, anything right. like that. Uh, all we have to do is just customise the interface to be a little bit nicer yeah. for them. Okay. So I feel this relates to me because I'm renowned for falling asleep in lectures. That's pure, <laughs> pure boredom. So just just to wake up and kind of change the learning styles for people that cannot just sit there and absorb knowledge. You know, just just to break it up and get people's attention again. Well, this is actually for for, for teachers. That's yeah. for me. Actually, but, because but I want to know whether the crowd has understood it or yeah, whether they're yeah, sleeping, right? Because so. like I say, if you say, does everyone get that? You get a few nods, but you don't truly know. Yeah, I agree. Who, who and where we would expand with it to kind of incentivize a little bit more would be to gain some sort of point system, make a challenge, make it somewhat more like a game. Mm -hmm. But it would require the lecturer to kind of potentially provide some small rewards. So the person at the end who has got the most points could then gain some sort of reward and it could be, you know, top three. Yeah. I just wanted to ask how it's different from all everywhere uh, Well, the idea of this is we just want it to be really, really non-intrusive. We don't want a lecturer having to spend, sit there and spend ages setting it up. We want them to be able to walk into the lecture theatre, hit a button and it goes, and then everyone just joins as they kind of walk into the lecture. We don't want the lecture to be inundated with loads of data, we just want it to be really quick and they can just hit next. So we want them to be able to pre-prepare pre their questions if they want to, which is a feature that we would bring in afterwards, and they can just load it up and just go. Uh, they could even set timers if they wanted to. Yeah. We can have a timeout on the question so that it's not set that you get 30 seconds to answer it. If it's not answered, then the lecturer knows that 5 out of 20 people didn't answer. Again, that could be because they didn't know. That's down to the lecturer to interpret it. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Exactly. So I think this has a lot of utility to kind of break, the, break up the flow in a good exactly. way. Exactly. That's exactly um, good. But, yeah. I would recommend having a look at a, uh, some software called Kahoot. K A H O O T. So it's something similar to Cool. Thank you. All right. Well done. Thank you, we are done with us. Um, I am mind blown by some of the things that came out today. Uh, it was a one day event. We got a lot more than we expected, to be honest. The quality and the, to be honest, the effectiveness of the ideas you guys had is inspiring. So, well done once again. Um, may I ask the judges to accompany me so we can decide who the winner is? Yeah. yeah.